Hello, little artist. My name is Miss Erin and I'm here at Makers and I am so glad that you're here to create with me today. I know that you've been to the library and you may have seen Miss Peggy and you got your take home makers kit. I am so excited to be offering these at the library this summer and we'll be doing it three different times. So each month, be sure to go back to get the other kits. Each one will be different. Now today we are making these super cute bird feeders that will look so lovely hanging out in your yard. Before we get started, I always like to share a few of my favorite books. And so one of my very favorite bird books is called Who Ever Heard of a Flying Bird by Dan Cunliffe. I also love Any and Everything by Mo Willems, of course. And this book is really cute. I don't expect that you'll be feeding any ducks with your bird feeder, but Ducky Ducky Likes to Moo by Eric Sturvent is a really cute one as well. Now you do need a few materials at home before you get started. You'll want some paper towels and a bowl full of water. You probably would like a baking pan or a tray that will be able to catch any of the extra bird seed that sort of flies around. A funnel, if you have one, will be super helpful. A funnel is really easy to make out of a piece of paper as well. Um, I can show you how to do that at the end. And grown-ups, you'll need a couple of supplies. These are only for grown-ups. Something to cut a hole into the plastic bottle. Um, I have scissors and I also have a cardboard cutter. I'm going to flip my camera down so that you can see what we're doing and we'll get to work. Okay, have fun. So here I have set up all of my supplies. I have the bird seed over here. Now I know we're working with a lot of allergies. So at the end of the video, I've posted um, the information about the bird seed so everybody has access to it. I have a container or a little pouch of some beads and string over here. I have my bottle, my paints. This is some tissue paper. The white is glue. I've got my bowl of water and paper towel, paintbrush, spoons, bottle, and scissors. Now, uh, the first step of this project is going to be to decorate the bottle. Grownups, the most important thing to know right now is that this paint is not washable. I chose this paint because it's going to be outside and potentially in the rain every once in a while, and I didn't want the paint to wash off, but please remember that. And little artists, if your grownup isn't in the room, why don't you pause it and go tell them really quick just to make sure that you're set up appropriately so you don't get any stains. You might be able to see my pants, but really and truly this, this paint does not come out of clothing. Okay, so we have the tissue paper here. Now, one really fun thing to do with tissue paper is to cut it. So you can turn this tissue paper into so many different shapes. You can cut a bunch of it together, or you could just cut a couple together. You can do straight lines. You can make angled lines and angles, what you see in a triangle. You could make wavy lines, or you could just use your tissue paper exactly as it came. When you do decide to use the tissue paper, you need to know that it's a three-step process. So the first part is to put the glue on the bottle. The second part of the process is to glue Put the tissue paper on top of the glue. And then for the third and final part, you want to put the glue over the top and that's just to protect it. Okay. Now that's how you do your tissue paper. For your paints, just paint on the bottle however you'd like. When you're ready to get a new color, I pretend like I'm painting the bottom of my bowl. And then this acrylic paint, it doesn't like to get wet. So I'll always dab my paintbrush on the paper towel right after. Now, another really fun way to paint, if you're looking to get a ton of little polka dots, is to use the back of the paintbrush. So I'll dip it in my paint, and then I can add little polka dots all around. I went ahead and already painted my bottle. So I put tissue paper down at the bottom and at the top, and then I did a lot of different kind of rainbows and flower designs in the middle. Once you've finished your bottle, be sure to paint your spoons. 
you'll want to paint the top and the bottom and all the sides so that it will look something completely covered like these. Once you've finished painting, be sure to set all your materials aside and let them completely dry before you try to cut any holes in the bottle. This next part of the project, we're going to be creating the hanging portion of the lid. So you'll notice in the lid, there is a hole. Now it may not be big enough, quite yet big enough for this string. So if you have a nail or a needle or something that you could sort of fit in and, and loosen it up a little bit, I think that will be helpful. There are two sides to this string. One has a knot and one is sort of glued shut a little bit. You'll wanna put the knot on the inside of your lid and then thread the string through. Once you have that, you can go ahead and start threading all your beads on top of this string. And then when you're finished, when you have your entire string filled as long as you'd want, you can have your grown-ups tie a knot at the top with a loop so that we can hang it. Okay, now grown-ups, it's your turn. Your job is to cut the holes in the bottle. Now, you are a grown-up, and I totally trust whatever method you think is the best to cut these holes. There's just a couple of things that I'd like to tell you about them first. The first thing is that when you're cutting, make sure one hole is higher than the other. You want your spoon to be at an angle so that the bird food will, or the bird seed will kind of fall down. The second thing is my recommendation is that you have one going this way and another going this way. So both of my holes are going the same exact direction and I think it would be really difficult for the bird to actually sit on there. The last thing is the top hole where the back of your spoon is going to come out of can just be a regular size. The other side though, where the bottom of the spoon is, a uh, shape something similar to a half circle is probably what would work best because you want a little bit of extra room above the top of the spoon here for the bird seed to fall down. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much. All right, so I've placed my spoons in their slots and I'm gonna go ahead and fill up the bird seed. This bird seed is manufactured in a plant that does peanuts and tree nuts, so please keep that in mind. Now, if you have a funnel, the easiest way is just put that in there. But if you don't, it can be really quickly made with a piece of paper. I just sort of roll it together, and then try to angle the bottom of it tighter, like a cone, and the top of it larger. Then I'll put it in my bird feeder, and start to pour it in. Once I've filled it, I can go ahead and put the lid on. And there we go. Here we have a beautiful bird feeder to hang in your yard. Now, I hope you all enjoyed yourselves. Thank you so much for picking up this craft and creating with me. I'd love to see your pictures. You can tag me on social media. My handle is at makersri. And I hope to see you in the studio sometime soon. Okay, bye.